Okay, now to some calculations with beat frequency and the Doppler effect. Beat frequencies, as I mentioned earlier, are pretty simple, but let's look at one anyway. If you have a piano tuner that is <clears throat> trying to see if the, uh, the string is exactly on tune with a tuning fork, and they strike the piano string and the tuning fork at the same time, but here's a frequency of 5 hertz ringing, kind of superimposed on top of the 440 hertz sound. Then we want to know what are the possible frequencies of the piano string. So if it was exactly on 440 hertz, you shouldn't hear any ringing at all, which is what he's looking for. But if it's off, our equation for the beat frequency is... F1 minus F2. Uh, you don't even need to really even write down this frequency. You just need you just know that the frequencies, if they're ringing at five, have to be off by five. So you could plug in five here and 440 and do this kind of thing. But you probably figured it out in your head. This is going to be 440 plus or minus five. So the two options are 445 hertz, or it could be ringing at 435 hertz. Pretty tricky stuff here. Okay, let's look at something a little bit more challenging. Um, looking at the Doppler effect now. If we have an ambulance and you're sitting out enjoying some lemonade on your front porch and the ambulance goes screaming by at a speed of 30 meters per second, and you, with your perfect pitch, say, hey, that siren is at 3,200 hertz. But you think back to your physics class and say, wait a minute, it's shifted because it's moving relative to me. I wonder what the drivers inside the ambulance are hearing because they hear the unshifted frequency. So if we start with the big fat Doppler shift equation, the one that I like, you're going to have F prime, which is the shifted frequency, equals the unshifted frequency times the speed of sound plus or minus the speed of the observer divided by the speed of sound minus or plus the speed of the source. So there is our big, fat, nasty equation. Now in this case, you hear the 3200 hertz when it's moving toward you, and that's the shifted frequency. So we're going to plug in 3200 for the left-hand side of our equation, and in this case we're solving for F. Speed of sound, if you're not told otherwise, always assume it's 343. Uh, when it's moving toward you, we're going to use the top sign, so that's plus here. And then we're going to have 343 minus on the bottom. And we want the velocity of the observer. Again, think about relative to the air. So you, sitting on your front porch, have a velocity of 0. The <clears throat> ambulance has a velocity of 30. So we plug that in, and we get frequency times... 343 over 343 minus 30 is 310. So we're going to get our frequency equals 3200, and then multiply that and divide that. So you're going to have 310. Essentially, the fraction flips over. And before we even calculate this, we would expect that you're hearing a higher frequency than what <clears throat> the ambulance drivers are hearing. So we would expect something lower than 3200, and we're multiplying by something less than 1, so obviously that's going to work out. This turns out to be 2920 hertz, if we round it a little bit. Okay. Now the other thing we want to know is what frequency do you hear as the ambulance passes you and drives away. So we're going to use the same equation here where we don't care about the 3200 now. We care about this number here, the actual frequency. So we're going to plug that in for F and we're going to find a different um, shifted frequency for when we're going away or the ambulance is going away now. So now we're going to plug in the actual frequency I'm just going to write 2920, but uh, I kept all the digits in my calculator when I plugged this in. So don't ever accuse me of intermediate rounding. I don't do it. Uh, now we want the bottom signs since it's now moving away. So negative on the top, plus on the bottom. 
Again, your velocity is zero, and the velocity of the ambulance is 30. So 2920, 343, and 373. And <clears throat> you throw that in your calculator, and you get 2685. All right, so there you have it, three different frequencies, what the ambulance driver hears, what you heard when it's coming toward you, and what you hear when it drives away. One more problem, then we'll be done. Uh, this one is a little trickier, not too bad, though. Uh, and you'll see one similar to this on your homework, so you might want to pay attention. Okay, you're driving toward a cliff. Why you're doing this, I don't know. Your brain isn't fully developed when you're an adolescent, so you do things like this. At 20 meters per second, and you decide to honk your horn, which has a 600 hertz frequency, relative, to, or when you're not moving relative to the source of the sound. So if you're in the car, that's what you hear. And you want to hear an echo off that distant cliff. So we want to figure out what pitch the echo is because we get some shifting going on. So first of all, this is going to take two steps. First, we want to know uh, what the observer of the cliff is hearing. Not that the cliff has ears, but if it did, this is the frequency of the sound wave that is hitting the cliff. So it is the original frequency, 600, because uh, you are a moving source, your car is, so that frequency gets shifted uh, <clears throat> when the sound wave hits the cliff, well, before it hits the cliff, when it leaves your car. Anyway, all right, so we're going to have 343. You're approaching, so that's going to be a plus here and a minus here. Um, and let's see, the cliff is the observer. So the, I guess I should write down this equation so we don't all get lost because I keep forgetting. Anyway, frequency, velocity, sound, plus or minus velocity of observer over velocity of sound minus or plus velocity of source. Okay, that's better. So we want the velocity of the observer. In this case, that's the cliff. The cliff is not moving relative to the air. Now the velocity of the source is your car, so that's 20. Plug all this stuff in, and the sound wave that hits the cliff has a frequency of 637 hertz. Now that means when it gets echoed, it bounces off the cliff, and the frequency doesn't shift um, on the bounce, on the reflection, but this is the sound wave that's coming toward you. And if you were at rest, so say you honked and stopped the car really fast and the cliff is really far, and by the time the echo got back to you, this is what you would hear. Or maybe a simpler situation would be something, somebody standing outside the car as you were driving by. They would hear this frequency for the echo off the cliff. But you are moving toward that echo, so now we have a moving observer, and that's going to shift this again. So now we're going to have F, maybe we'll call it F prime prime. This is you hearing the echo in your moving car. So we're going to take this 637 is the unshifted, as I just mentioned. Uh, if somebody was standing still listening to this echo, that's what they would hear. Okay, then we're going to have 343. You're still approaching each other, so we're still going to have plus in the numerator and minus in the denominator. But now you are the observer, and you are moving, so now we're going to put a 20 up here, and we're going to say the cliff is the source of the sound, and it is not moving, so we'll put a zero down there. So we're going to have 637.15 times... 363 over 343 and we end up with a nice high pitch of 674 hertz so this thing gets shifted up twice okay see you next time